Hi, I'm Fraser Douglas, and I've been an avid tent camper now for 55 years. In this video, I want to present 10 uncommon tips for making a comfortable and enjoyable campsite. I call these tips uncommon because they are rarely promoted by top camping authorities and because they are rarely followed by most inexperienced camping families. Consequently, you can see dozens of campsites that failed to follow these recommendations in state and federal campgrounds and on YouTube videos. Furthermore, you'll find many posts on social media sites that argue against some of these recommendations. Nevertheless, most experienced tent campers would agree that following these recommendations will help to make your camping trip more comfortable and enjoyable. My first tip is to buy a quality made tent because quality made tents are less likely to leak in the rain, less likely to collapse in the wind, and less likely to be damaged by ordinary camping activities. If you have a problem, its customer service department will usually repair or replace a damaged part for little or no expense. Consequently, most good quality tents will last 20 years or longer. And if you look for used and discounted tents, you can frequently find these quality made tents for just a few dollars more than the cheap economy tents. Cheap tents, on the other hand, have poles that can easily bend and break, zippers that can easily snag or separate, seams that can easily unravel and leak, and fabrics that can easily tear. Consequently, many of these cheap tents will not last over five years. The reason I included this tip is because the vast majority of inexperienced campers buy cheap tents from discount department and sporting goods stores just to save a few dollars. But after a few years, their tent will fail and they'll have to go back and buy another tent. My second tip is to buy a tent that is small enough to fit in your car with your other gear and small enough to set up on most tent pads, but yet is large enough to comfortably sleep a family with one or two small children. For most families, this would be a six-person tent with around 80 to 100 square feet of floor space. If you have a larger car with lots of packing space, you could move up to an eight-person tent that would provide even more comfort. If you have a larger family, you may have to buy a second tent for those older kids. But don't buy anything larger than an eight-person tent because larger tents won't fit on most tent pads and in many other campsites. And when you do set it up, they frequently crowd the fire ring and make it dangerous to make a campfire. The reason I included this tip is because many camping families buy super large 12, 14, and 16 person tents and then have difficulty setting them up on many campsites. My third tip is to make a ground cloth to protect the bottom of your tent from sharp twigs, roots, or rocks and to reduce the likelihood that water will seep into the bottom of your tent. You can save a lot of money by making your ground cloth from a tarp rather than buying a footprint, but make sure that that tarp is a mid-grade or thicker tarp, and be sure to cut it at least one foot shorter than the dimensions of your floor. The reason for cutting your ground cloth shorter than the dimensions of your tent floor is so that rainwater hitting the side of your tent will roll down the tent and soak into the bare ground rather than on top of a waterproof tarp where it can sit there, seep through the bottom of your tent, and eventually soak your bedding and your clothing. 
The reason for including this tip is because many tent camping families don't seem to understand that their ground cloth should be cut smaller than the floor dimensions of their tent. My fourth tip is to always set your tent and kitchen canopy up on high ground in your campsite. If a tent pad is provided, use it by all means, and then you just have to find another high spot for your kitchen canopy. The reason I include this tip is that many campers apparently do not realize that the highest spot in their campsite is the paved parking pad. And they set their tents up on the surrounding grassy ground area that can easily flood in the event of rain. My fifth tip is to always guy your tent out to prevent accidental wind damage and rig these guy lines so that the adjustable loop is attached to your tent rather than to a stake that has been driven into the ground. This procedure for guying out tents was adopted by the U.S. Army many years ago and is specified in the Standard Operating Procedures Manual. When a guy line needs to be tightened or loosened, it's much easier to adjust when the adjustable loop is attached high on the tent rather than buried deep into the ground. The reason for including this tip is because discount department stores frequently attach guy lines to their tents and these guy lines are attached so that the permanent loop is attached to the tent and the adjustable loop is at the distal end that would be driven into the ground. And apparently most tent camping families assume that this is the proper way to deploy the guy lines. My sixth tip is to spread out a polyester carpet or wool blanket on the floor of your tent to make the floor warmer. And a carpet made from either synthetic fibers or wool as opposed to cotton will continue to provide good insulation even if they get wet. The reason I included this tip is because many social media sites argue that a polyethylene tarp or cotton moving blanket is the best thing to put on the floor of your tent. And few camping families seem to realize that synthetic fibers and wool would be much warmer. My seventh tip is to determine the predicted nighttime low temperatures during your trip and sleep in enough clothes to keep you warm at that temperature. For example, if the nighttime lows are predicted to drop down to around 70, wear a pair of wool socks, polyester athletic pants, and a polyester hoodie. If the nighttime low temperatures are predicted to drop much below 70, you may want to add a second pair of wool socks, long underwear pants, long underwear shirt, and a stocking cap. And all of these garments should be made from either polyester, wool, or silk rather than cotton because the polyester, wool, and silk will keep you warm even if you sweat in them. When you add a blanket or a quilt to plenty of warm clothing, you should be able to easily stay warm down to 30 degrees. The reason that I included this tip is because many camping gear dealers and social media posts suggest that a sleeping bag rated down to a certain temperature will keep you warm regardless of the clothing that you wear. And many inexperienced tent campers seem to enjoy sleeping with as little clothing as possible. My eighth tip is, despite strong arguments to the contrary, the warmest and most comfortable camp bed can be made with non-slip yoga mats and thick, insulated, self-inflating air mattresses. A yoga mat usually costs less than $20 and provides extra insulation from the cold ground, protection from moisture, and extra comfort. 
Self-inflating air mattresses are very easy to set up. Just open the valve and allow them to fill up with air. And they range in thickness from about 1 inch to 4 inches. As a general rule, thicker mattresses provide more insulation from the cold ground and more comfort, but they are more expensive. Good quality 4 inch mattresses cost as much as $200 each. When you combine two of these mattresses and cover it with a fitted sheet, you can make a very comfortable standard size bed that would suit most couples. But Ava and I prefer to make a king size bed made with three of them. When combined with warm clothes and a good quilt, this is a very warm and comfortable bed, especially for couples. The reason that I've included this tip is because a large number of very vocal campers argue strongly that cots and air beds are better sleeping options than self-inflating air mattresses. Despite the fact that each of these bedding options has significant limitations. Cots, for example, require considerable packing space, require extra setup time, have metal hinges and corners that can hurt you, and they are cold. The extra insulation needed to make them warm requires even more packing space. Air beds require pumps that can break or get lost, spring leaks frequently, and are cold. My ninth tip is to buy a rectangular sleeping bag rated down to 30 degrees. Rectangular sleeping bags usually cost much less than mummy sleeping bag and they offer many more sleeping options. On cool nights, one bag could be zipped together to make a enclosed sleeping bag, but on warm nights, it could be opened up to make a nice quilt. Two sleeping bags can be partially zipped together to make a large quilt or zipped together to make a double sleeping bag. Synthetic fill bags are better than down fill bags because the synthetic fill bags will keep you warm even when they get wet, and they frequently do get wet, and they will dry much faster. And get a bag that's rated down to 30 degrees so that you can stay toasty warm even when the temperature drops lower than you expect. The reason I included this tip is because camping gear retailers strongly push mummy bags and rarely have rectangular bags on display. Furthermore, posts on social media sites frequently recommend mummy bags, rarely recommend rectangular bags. And my tent tip is to only stay in popular campgrounds that have at least 40 campsites because these larger campgrounds are much more likely to have security personnel and measures that will protect you from animals and, and malicious people and can provide assistance in the case of emergency. The reason for including this tip is because a popular camping book series describing the best campsites in every state include many small, remote, unsupervised campgrounds. And because many posts on social media endorse small, remote, isolated, private campsites and campgrounds. Well, I've run out of time, but I still have many more uncommon tips, mainly about setting up your camp kitchen and cooking great tasting meals in your campsite. I'll just have to post another video with those tips later. For more information about tent camping gear and procedures, please visit my website, moderntentcamping.com. A link is provided in the description below. And while you're there, check out my Amazon page for links to lots of good pieces of camping gear. Thanks for watching.